Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show, and welcome to my home here in southern Spain. Thanks for joining me once again for our regular late night Saturday visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows. With it being a Saturday, we've had a busy old day today and we've been out and about. Oh, I must mention, we did a, a bit of bingo with uh, Sandra and John, who are our neighbours, and they set up bingo for a few of us. So we had a bit of a bingo night. And as you can imagine, I was nominated bingo caller, which was marvellous. I'm a bit rubbish, but I did my best. I'm Brett, I'm your host for a nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. I've got Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Please do check them out. I've put loads of bits and pieces on and I'd love your comments. I've launched a supporter page as well where you'll find some extra content and you could give us a bit of support. Patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Time now for our latest adventure from yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is an episode called The Village Scene Matter or The Missing Masterpiece. First broadcast on the 28th of March, 1950. From Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. This is Doug Strand over at Bay State Bonding and Liability. I've got a big bonding case for you up in Boston. Well, I just started to work on a case here in Hartford, also bonded. But okay, what's the picture? Huh? How'd you know it was a picture? How did I know what was a picture? The one I'm calling about, an oil painting. Insured for a quarter of a million. It's just been stolen. <laughs> Edmund O'Brien in another transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Bay State Bonding and Liability Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during investigation of a missing masterpiece. An investigation that took place in Boston, but turned out to be no tea party. Expense account, item one, eight dollars, mileage, Hartford to Beantown on the Charles. First stop, the Mordan Art Gallery, a modest made-over brownstone in a modest business neighborhood. Oh, hello. Is this Andre and Modan here? He stepped out of the office for a few moments, but perhaps I could help. I'm his daughter. Oh, I see. Uh, my name is Dollar. I'm from the insurance company. They sent me up to see what I could do for you on last night's theft. Oh, that's such good news. Father has been beside himself. I know he'll be so relieved with you here. Now, well, let's see. Uh, according to my worksheet, the painting was owned by Mr. Riddle, huh? Caesar Riddle? Yes. He's an acquaintance of ours. He's not what you'd call the archetype by any means, but he's interested in good oils, and he has a very nice collection of masters. Uh, was this village seen on loan to the gallery, or, or did Mr. Riddle want to sell it? It was a loan, and that's what makes it so terrible for Father, and for me, too. He didn't want to accept the loan, and I talked him into it. You see, it's been very difficult for Father, and I thought that hanging an important picture in the gallery would bring people in, and it did for three days, but... Oh, Father, this is Mr. Dollar. Hey, yeah. He's here to help us. He was sent by the company that insured village scene. Ah, bless you, bless you. I am so happy you are here. Well, I hope I can help, Mr. Modan. The police, I know they do their work well, but they are so stern, unfriendly. To them, who is Pierre de Boigal, the elder? And village scene, what is that? A stolen broom would annoy them so much. Ah, uh, don't let their attitude fool you, Mr. Modan. I'm sure they're doing everything they can, Father. Yeah. Mr. Modan, I understand that nothing else was touched. Yeah, what is anything next to Pieter Brugge? It was the only master in the gallery then, huh? I'd like to see where it was hanging. Yeah, of course. To this door. Teresa, you will wait? Yes, dear, I'll be here. Wait, Mr. Dollar. I feel I must explain the importance to me personally. Is that all right? Sure, if you think it'll help, go right ahead. Mr. Dollar, if we do not find the canvas, my gallery is gone. Everything, all my years are for nothing. Why do you say that? Because of that man, Rito. There is a, a hate 
between us. Well, we have not expressed it, but it is there because... Well, you have met my daughter. You realize her great beauty. I have tried to protect her from this man. Now I am on my knees to him because of my charity. Well, I wouldn't give up if I were you. We haven't even started on this case yet. If we fail, I will take her away from Boston and start all over again. I... You come this way. In this gallery, you see my life, Mr. Dollar. Many of these canvases I bring with me from Salzburg when I leave before the Anschluss. Here, here under that light is where a village scene was hanging. I, I have hung nothing more yet. Mm-hmm. Mm. Force this window, huh? Yeah. You see, it looks on the back of the property. Do you see something? No. Well, I was just wondering what I'd do with the picture if I'd stolen it. Who could I sell it to? Who'd be willing to take a chance on displaying it? Oh, I'm afraid there are a great many unscrupulous collectors in the world. There's much trade in stolen goods. And again, sometimes great masterpieces are held for ransom. For that reason, I have offered a reward of $5,000 myself. Hey, that's pretty steep for you, isn't it? What about Ritto? Ritto. What cares Ritto? To him, the canvas is nothing. I wish he was right. Well, I... I think I've seen everything I want to see here. I'm going to check in with the police, Mr. Modan. I'll... I'll let you know when we turn something up. I'd like to talk with whoever's working on the Modan burglary, officer. Here's my ID. Insurance, huh? What'd you say the beef was? M-A-U-D-A-N. Andrian Modan. Stolen painting. Call came in this morning. Modan. Oh, yeah, here it is. That'll be... Ah. Estimated value of 250000 Yeah. A picture? Yeah. And I'll bet you the artist was lucky if he got a month's rent out of it. The price has gone up a hundred grand every century he's been dead. Ah, oh, one of them old timers. You can have him. I don't understand him. Your man is Sergeant Hines through that door, first office to the left. I'll buzz him. You're on the way. Thanks. Yeah, come on in. How are you, Dollar? So you came up on the more damn thing, huh? Yeah, that's right. I wanted to check in with you, find out how much I can do before you pull your rank. Ah, cut it out. Oh, I, I run into some touchy policemen. Not here. Well, I get my hat off that chair. Sit down. Thanks. You got a free hand as far as I'm concerned, Dollar. You're not to see the old man yet, more than? Yeah. Say, uh, what kind of a make did you get at the gallery? Nothing special. Typical window job. Heavy crowbar, no signs worth anything outside. The old boy ran a story in the papers about the picture coming to his gallery, so it's a little tough to narrow the suspects. This guy who owns it, Cesar Ritto, I've heard of him, haven't I? Yeah, a lot of people have. He made his pile during the war. It was talk of black market, but nobody could pin anything on him. Then last year, he was up before the Senate Investigation Committee. Something about buying contracts. Then he came home. What are you looking for, Dollar? Fraud charges? Well, let's be realistic. They may be easier to find than the painting. I've worked a few of these things. You know, the usual method is to cut the canvas out of the frame with a razor blade while it's still hanging. Rolled up, it's easy to conceal. On this job, it went frame and all, didn't it? That's what I got. But I'm thinking the other way. I got details out looking for that frame. Mm, I can dream, can I? It's faster my way. And I got tickets for South Pacific for three weeks after Easter. I did some spade work on Cesar Ritto that afternoon before I went to his address. His current position was that of wholesale liquor distributor for a number of distillers that managed to keep their prices high and their quality low. His financial condition was healthy. 
But you don't have to be broke to be able to use $250,000. I found Riddle's residence halfway up the shady side of Beacon Hill. He hadn't made the top, but he was climbing. There was a coat of arms on the wrought iron gate and a butler complete with commabund inside the front entrance. But the class stopped there. Charles! That's that clown from the dress shop. Give him to me. When I get through with him, you can shovel him out. It's a gentleman to see Mr. Riddle, madam. Oh. Go finish the silver. I'll talk to him. Yes, madam. Hello, my name is Dollar. That's very clever, but it doesn't help. Could you be the sick friend he's been sitting up with lately? The insurance company told him I was coming up when he reported the theft of his painting. Ah, oh, Riddle's folly, huh? You, Mrs. Riddle? Not yet. I'm holding out to be a June bride. Come on in the bar, Mr. Dollar. You and me are interested in the same situation. My name is Lily Swanson. I don't know anything about art, but I got a few ideas about who's supposed to be modeling as a sap. You want a drink? No, thanks. Don't let me stop you. I had one here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Well, did you meet the museum piece? You mean Teresa Modan? Yeah, I met her. If you want to make a quick buck, take out a policy on her life. To me, she's poison. Oh, that's hard to believe. What do you mean by that? I was just looking at you. You don't have anything to worry about. Oh, haven't you heard sometimes beauty is only skin deep? I want to tell you about Caesar Riddle. He's a climber. I've been good enough for him for a long time, but now he wants refinement. Doing specialties in burlesque houses, that's one thing you don't develop. Maybe... Maybe I'd better have that drink. Yeah, I'll help yourself. Don't get me wrong. I'm not building up to a sob story. It's just like him waking up one morning with a big interest in art and money enough to carry it off. The right people were impressed. Now he wants that dame and he's willing to gamble a few hundred thousand if it'll help. That's why he put that picture in that fire trap. Where do you think it is now? How should I know? The point is, he doesn't care where it is. He's protected. Another point is that I'm getting paid to care a lot where it is. Well, I can't help you there. But he's got to be taught that he can't walk over people without getting hurt himself. I'm afraid I can't help you there. Then that dame, Teresa. If you think she's worth it, tell her. He's not good enough for her. She'll get hurt. He's got no more feeling for her than he has for a new suit. He'll wear her for a while. When he gets bored, he'll go shopping for a new pattern. If she's a nice kid, she ought to be told. That's quite a pitch, Lily. Caesar. I don't mind strangers hearing things like that, but the servants might have been listening. Discipline, you know. I don't care. Wait till I write my memoirs. You're one of the rottenest mashes I've ever known, and I've known a few. Go fix your face. Sure. On the way, I might as well fix yours. I, uh... I didn't hear enough of it to find out who you are. Name is Dollar, insurance company. Oh, yeah. Tell me, you made any progress? Yeah, general progress. I've learned that Bay State Bonding and Liability hired an investigator on the wrong end of this case. They should have looked you over before they issued the policy. With any kind of big company, you can depend on about 90% of that all the time. Rush things when the money's coming in, then be careful when it's too late. Tell me, what about my picture? Well, I don't think a nice, honest thief has it. Why do you say that? number of reasons. It's too hot to steal the way it was stolen. Well, what do you think happened? You're too big to be accused on a hunch. Wait till I get some facts. Then I'll talk to you about it. Right now, I want to talk about a clause in your policy that says you shouldn't move the insured property without first notifying the company. Yeah, that's right. Big companies again. They're so tied up with procedures and rules, they'd get themselves hamstrung if they tried to build a case on them. I'll find you some words in that thing that'll nullify that clause. Tell me, you think I can't? <laughs> I was afraid you'd say that. You know, you've got a good head, Mr. Riddle. Yeah. Yeah, say nothing of being a rotten masher. I don't see any reason to waste any more of each other's time, do you? You stay for a drink? Oh, no. No, thanks. I, I very seldom drink on the job. I parked my car in an alley around the corner and then went back. I found a spot opposite the Riddle place where I wouldn't be obvious and settled down to wait for him to leave. I hoped I'd planted enough doubt in his mind to make him move if he was implicated. Whatever I'd planted grew slowly because I waited a long, cold time. 
Night fell and I drove closer to the house. Finally, the door opened and Riddle moved a blue-black sedan out of his garage. By the time I got my car started, a coupe pulled out of the driveway. In it, I spotted the blonde head of the lady scorned, Lily Swanson. I followed her. After a few blocks, it was evident that her destination was the Mordan Gallery. I pulled up at the rear of the building. I could see a dim light burning on the ground floor. I started toward a window. But before I got to it, it happened at another one. It was a woman's scream. But when I finally got inside, the only person there was Cesar Ritto. He was still alive. The stupidity of shock on his face as he leaned against the wall under a light that had once shown up the best features of Pieta Bruegel's village scene. In just a moment, we will return to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. But first, Wednesday nights on CBS bring you Groucho Marx, Bing Crosby, and Burns and Allen, an hour and a half of radio's top entertainment for the whole family. Bing Crosby, Burns and Allen, and Groucho Marx are heard in most of these same CBS stations. So make this wonderful Wednesday a steady date with CBS. And now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. So there I was. I'd been sent to Boston to find the missing village scene and found myself at the scene of attempted murder. Cesar Riddo had taken two slugs, one in his left shoulder and a grazing one on his right forearm. I phoned for police and ambulance, then did what I could to make Riddle comfortable. I turned up the thermostat, covered him with my coat. Who did it, Dollar? Uh, that's the question I was going to ask you. Don't you know? Must have been outside. That's right. Through the open window there. Why'd you come down here? I forgot my hat. Look, you're in no shape to try being clever. You met Teresa. Leave me alone. I want to know how your stolen painting figures into this. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I met Teresa. This is where we meet. What about the painting? It was stolen. I... Uh, I... I don't feel good, darling. I don't feel good at all. I, I don't want to talk. I feel... I feel like I'm going to pass out. And he did. After the ambulance took him away, I made a statement to the police that was not false, but lacked enough truth to save a few people from being dragged in for questioning. I headed for the blonde member of that group. What do you want? Just a few words. I used up all I had early in the day. Yeah, but we got new things to talk about Such now. as? Well, the police might want more from me on that art gallery shooting. All right. Is he dead? No. Did you know I was there, or were you just guessing? I wasn't guessing. I followed you from here. Oh, well, I suppose that earns you a drink. Come on. Thanks. Up yourself. You said the police were there. Yeah, I had to call them. I didn't mention your being there. Why not? Because I wanted to get to you before they hauled you in. I didn't shoot him. I followed him there, but I didn't shoot him. Somebody did. There were two women there and me, and I didn't do it. Why did you follow him? Because I heard him phone that Teresa and tell her to meet him. I wanted to find out what was going on, but I didn't. I changed my mind. I didn't even stop. I was afraid I might do something crazy if I saw them together. I'd like to believe you. It's the truth. Maybe. I hope it is, because I'd like to link the shooting up with the painting... If I can, you're going to be in bad trouble. You're pretty smart, aren't you? Things just worked out this way. You think Caesar did something with that painting for the insurance money, and you want me to help you prove it to save my own skin? No, gorgeous, no. To save the company, 250 grand. You'll never die of softening of the heart, will you? All right, what comes first? I want to hear everything you know about this deal. And while you're telling me, I want you to help me go through this house from cupola to basement. This time, I believed her story. The 
there still wasn't anything in it to help me. The search of the house paid off the same way. No painting, no leads, nothing. At 11 p.m., I left, looked up the Modan home address, and theatered the other point of the triangle in her den. It's terribly late, Mr. Dolly. It's after 11. Is your father here? He's upstairs in his studio. Wouldn't tomorrow morning be better? Maybe for you, but not for me. I don't want to give you all that time to get your story straight. My story straight? Why'd you meet Rito at the gallery tonight? Don't say that's any of your affair. A girl has a right to meet her fiancé when and where she wishes. Fiancé? Yes. They are to be married as soon as possible. You were with him when he was shot. Why did you leave him? Because I was terrified. Caesar told me to go. He thought she was trying to kill me. Did he say it was Lily or is this your idea? Of course it was she. Who else would it be? Mr. Dollar, this situation is unpleasant enough without these insinuations from you that I don't even understand. It means nothing to you. It is a matter for the police. You have no right to meddle in our lives. You were sent here to look for village scenes. That's what I'm doing. Why are you marrying that self-styled dictator? Because I love him. Well, that won't stay down. Nobody but Caesar Riddo could love Caesar Riddo. Right. It's because I'm tired of being a poor man's daughter. I want to get away. I finally decided what I want out of marriage. What he can give me. He's going to be a big man, a wealthy one. And I'm going to be his wife. Teresa. I'm sorry you heard that, Mr. Modan. Oh, Teresa. Stay out of his father. I've made up my mind. Go to bed. Go to bed with those words in my ear. My daughter, what has happened? What has that man done be to you? Be quiet, father. Teresa, wait. We will not be poor always. Go. Don't talk to me. How can this be? Suddenly, she is no longer Teresa. <laughs> I didn't sleep too well that night. An all-night car line that ran past my hotel didn't help. Neither did the questions that were running around in my head. But what grew in importance was the realization that the lives of everyone who had come in contact with the village scene had been emotionally upset since I'd arrived in Boston. That is all but Caesar Riddle, who'd only been shot. My half-conscious musings didn't move me forward any, but the phone call that awakened me did. Sergeant, what's new? That fraud case you were dreaming about, it won't work. Hey, come on, it's too early for that kind of stuff. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist it. The picture's been returned. What? The old man Mordan didn't know where to reach you, he called us. It was returned for the reward he posted. Have you seen it? No, but if he's not worried, I'm not. I've got a lot of other burglaries. Okay, thanks for calling, I'll, I'll go right out there. It sounded good until I got halfway to the gallery. Then things began to pester me. A, the painting had been stolen in the frame. B, Mordan hadn't mentioned being an artist, yet he'd been working in his studio the night before. C, Caesar Riddo knew nothing about art, collected as an affectation. And D, or Dan had been the only one to post a reward, $5,000, offered by a poor man. Then it hit me. He knew he wouldn't have to pay it. He'd posted the reward to divert suspicion. My hunch was that he had put the picture on ice himself. When I got to Modan's gallery, the copy Modan had made of Village Scene was there. But also, hanging next to it, was the original. You are surprised, Mr. Duller. Yeah. Yeah, doubly, Mr. Modan. My copy is quite excellent. Do you agree? Well, I'm not an expert, Modan. It is very good, I think. I, I am pleased with it. The most important work of my career. A work of love for Teresa. Yeah, I understand. She was an ambitious girl, always. Well, that is not a fault. She is like her mother, born for good things. I could not give them to her. She's a Rito could. He's soon coming for his canvas. Well, no crime has been committed, except theoretically. You copied the original, meant to sell it, but you didn't. 
Maybe Ritto won't press charges. Perhaps not. And he came the first time into our life I knew. The way he looked at her, I knew he wanted to take her away from me. Then the gifts more expensive, each one money to buy. You, you should understand, Mr. Dollar. This copy is a work of hate, too. You don't have to tell me these things. Why don't we wait till he gets here and see what he's going to do? Yeah, we wait. But I must say these things that are in my heart. To attempt a copy was wrong, and it was not wrong. To little Bruegel's village scene was nothing. He was blind. I hoped with the money I could hold the rest. But I, I waited too long. I was too late. He's taken her from me with his money. Come on, Mr. Modan. I think you'd better sit down. No, come no, no. Listen. Listen. Here he has come. I, I must be strong. Show him he is no bigger than I am. Hello, Modan. Modan. Dollar. Well, well. Except for a little blood, everything turned out just like it should. The insurance company will be happy. Where is my daughter? Why, she's in the car. She thought it would be better if she didn't come in. Yeah, perhaps she is right. Oh, come on, come on, Pop. I'll take good care of her. Now, come on, you... You just give me my picture and we can forget. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. What's this? There's two of them. Yeah, two of them. What's the matter with you, Modan? What is the matter? In all my life, there has been no shame until now. There, you see on the wall, deceit. For that, I am ashamed. Ah, we, we can still forget it. And in your car waiting for you, my daughter. For her, I feel the greatest shame. Give her my blessings. Modern. Hey, hey, no! My blessings. No! no. <sighs> Drop the gun to the floor. Go over to that chair and sit down. I could do nothing else. No. It is finished. Mr. Dollar. Your father killed him. He thought he was doing it for you. <laughs> no, there was no reason. Teresa, come on. Come on, pull yourself together. Stephen knew my father had made a copy and that he was going to sell the original. But he didn't care. As long as I married him, he wouldn't have done anything to father. And now Cecil's dead. My father is a murderer. <laughs> there wasn't much left for me to do in Boston. I made the statement that caused Andre and Modan to be booked for murder, a father who didn't know when to stop protecting his daughter. I paid a farewell visit to Teresa, the daughter who had put her father where he was by trying to help him. And I mentioned to Sergeant Hines that if he cared... It had to be Lily Swanson who had thrown those wild shots into Ritto at the gallery. Expense account item two, eight dollars. Return trip to Hartford. Expense account total, sixty-eight dollars and thirty cents. And I want to go on record right now as saying that the next time anybody sends me out after a masterpiece, my expense account is going to be a masterpiece of overstatement. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Truly, Johnny Dollar stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and was written by Gil Dowd and Paul Dudley with music composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Edmund O'Brien can currently be seen starring in the Harry M. Popkin United Artists production, D.O.A. Featured in our cast were Charles McGraw, Walter Burke, Lillian Bieff, Robert Griffin, James Nusser, Joan Banks, and Tyler McVeigh. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Join us again next week when, from Hollywood, Edmund O'Brien returns in another transcribed adventure of... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar.
There's the man with a little black bag turns up on most of these CBS stations every Wednesday night. And out of it comes some of the most lighthearted and most moving stories on the air. The man? Why, it's Dr. Christian, of course. And tomorrow night's the night for another of his famous visits. Be sure to hear Dr. Christian starring Gene Hirschholz as the beloved small-town physician every Wednesday night. Now stay tuned for The Adventures of Philip Marlowe, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, where Wednesday night is Bing Crosby night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our latest adventure with yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And don't forget, we'll be back with The Saint tomorrow, going live from 5 p.m. GMT. You can email me on brett at touradate.co.uk and you can support us, which would be just top notch, at patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye. <laughs>